I remember the days when anxiety and depression felt like my constant companions. Even though I seemed happy on the outside, each morning I woke up with a heavy heart, dreading the day. The weight of my worries seemed unbearable, and I often wondered if I would ever find relief. One particularly difficult evening, I found myself alone in my room, tears streaming down my face. I felt utter hopelessness, and in my desperation, I reached for my Bible, something that I hadn't done in a long time, and as I opened it, my eyes fell upon Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And it says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Depression is a common human experience, and the Bible acknowledges this reality through the stories of many of its characters. While the term depression isn't explicitly used in most translations, the Bible describes feelings of sorrow, despair, and emotional suffering using words like downcast, brokenhearted, and troubled. One of the greatest prophets, Elijah, experienced depression to the point that he wanted to die. After a triumphant victory over the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, where God answered his prayers with fire from heaven, Elijah found himself fleeing for his life from Queen Jezebel's wrath. And exhausted and overwhelmed, he journeyed into the wilderness, sat under a broom tree, and prayed that he might die, saying, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. And this is 1 Kings 19.4. Elijah's plea was a cry from the depths of his soul. He had just witnessed a miraculous display of God's power, yet he felt utterly alone and defeated. This paradox of experiencing great spiritual highs followed by deep emotional lows is something many of us can relate to. Despite his faith and the miracles he had seen, Elijah was still human, susceptible to fear, exhaustion, and despair. But in his darkest moment, God did not rebuke Elijah for his feelings. Instead, he sent an angel to provide food and water, allowing Elijah to rest and regain his strength. This act of divine care shows that God understands our physical and emotional needs. The angel's touch and the provision of sustenance were tangible reminders of God's presence and care. After this, Elijah traveled to Mount Horeb where he encountered God not in a powerful wind, earthquake, or fire, but in a gentle whisper. This gentle whisper, or still small voice, signifies that God often speaks to us in the quiet moments, when we are still and receptive. It was in this intimate encounter that God 
reassured Elijah, giving him new purpose and direction. Elijah's story is a powerful reminder that even the most faithful and strong among us can experience moments of deep despair and depression. And I want to give you some key takeaways that relate to our lives today that may make you feel a bit better about whatever situation that you might be in. Number one, it is okay to feel overwhelmed. Just as Elijah felt overwhelmed and exhausted, we too can face moments where life feels too heavy to bear. And it is important to acknowledge these feelings rather than suppress them. Admitting our struggles is the first step toward healing. Number two, rest and nourishment are essential. God provided Elijah with food and water and rest before addressing his spiritual needs and this highlights the importance of taking care of our physical well-being as a foundation for mental and emotional health. Sometimes the most spiritual thing we can do is take a nap, eat a good meal, or simply rest. Number three, God meets us in our weaknesses. Elijah encountered God in a gentle whisper, not in dramatic displays of power. This teaches us that God is present in our quiet, vulnerable moments, offering comfort and guidance. We don't have to be strong all the time. God meets us in our weakness and provides the strength that we need. Number four, new purpose and direction. After his encounter with God, Elijah was given new tasks and a renewed sense of purpose. Similarly, we can find hope and direction even after our darkest times. God has a plan for each of us and he can use our experiences of despair to shape us for future purposes. Number five, community and support. Elijah felt isolated and alone, believing he was the only one left who was faithful to God. However, God revealed that there were still 7,000 in Israel who had not bowed to Baal. This reminds us of the importance of community and support. We are not alone in our struggles. There are others who share our faith and can offer so much support and encouragement. Elijah's journey through depression and despair is a timeless story that resonates with so many of us today. It reminds us that feeling overwhelmed is part of the human experience, but we are also never alone. By taking care of our physical needs, seeking God's presence, and being open to new direction, not being stuck in our own ways and our own will, but being open to God's will and wanting what he wants more than anything, we can find hope and strength to move forward. Just as God provided for Elijah, he will provide for us, meeting us in our moments of need and guiding us toward a future filled with purpose and hope. If you are struggling with anxiety and depression, know that you are not alone. God sees your pain and he is ready to walk you through it. Trust in his love and allow him to restore your soul. 
for those of you who are just in despair right now, I just want to read some scripture over you. I just want to pour God's word into you, pour life into you in this moment. So whatever you're doing, maybe you could just stop and close your eyes and meditate on these scriptures and really just let them fill your cup up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Matthew 11:28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Psalm 42, 11, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Psalm 147, 3, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Psalm 23, 4, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 